Okay, so this tutorial we are going to look at how to take a 2D photo and make it 3D. It's not going to work very well for every type of photo, especially if there's something in the foreground that stretches out into the background. It's going to start getting a little too complex. But if you have something that you can break out into layers, uh, it's actually pretty easy. So this one, as you can see, uh, is just a you know a blurry background and then the flower in the foreground. And we're going to make it so that the background sinks back away and then the flower sticks out. These are the same principles that we looked at in making the custom 3D photographer uh, artwork, uh, but we're just going to apply it to a photo. So I went over here to a free public domain photo website and just grabbed this regular 2D photo. Open up in Photoshop. For this one, you really want to have Photoshop. It'll make your life a lot easier. If you only have something free like Paint.net or GIMP, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit more work to fill in the background. You'll see how that works here in a second. So let me go grab this. So here's the photo. The first thing we need to do is grab the actual flower out of the background. So I'm going to snag my quick select tool here. So I make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to go around here. Grab this out of here. You can you hold shift to keep adding more and then hold alt to subtract stuff away. So over here where I've selected too much, I'm holding down alt, you can see it turns to a minus sign. And it's not going to be perfect just yet. We're just going to get those. I'm holding back shift again to add more to it. And obviously we didn't want to do that. Step back a little bit here. No, no. Try to grab this last bit. There we go. This is a nice thing about Photoshop. It's pretty smart when you tell it. If you're not using Photoshop, this is especially when you're selecting green on green, gonna be a little difficult to select it all. But you can still do it. All right. Got my flower selected. So first thing we're gonna do is just copy it. And then before we do anything else, selection, modify, let's see, grow. That's what I'm looking for here. Grow selection, that's a little too big. Let's try this. Just probably like five pixels is enough. There we go, that's a little bit better. And now, you can go to Edit, and Fill. Default Content Aware, just hit OK. Give it a minute to think about it, and the flower is gone. Now, if you're not using Photoshop, and you need to get the flower out of the background, which you need to do, you're going to need to sort of select areas out here and then copy and paste them and then try to cover up the flower and then blur it together. And you can do it. It's just going to take longer. Uh, but now we have the flower out of our background and we've already copied it. So let's paste it back now. And it looks like we didn't get the whole thing. I must have missed Oh no, we did get the whole thing. Just put it up in the middle for some reason. 
weird, but okay. We can do that. Try to line that up. Okay. Not quite there. Turn down a bit. No, it's better. And you can see there's a little bit of ghosting right here where we erased the other one. And I think that might actually be in. Yep. And I haven't cleaned this one up yet. So I'm going to grab my eraser. I'm just going to touch this one up a little bit here. And over here. This shouldn't be there. enough for our purposes. Okay. Now, since this is the original background, it's going to be locked. I won't be able to put it into a, into a uh, group. I'm just going to duplicate it. We're just going to get rid of that. And then we are going to group these. The left eye. Duplicate that group. Right eye. Okay. We've got our two here. I like to have the left eye on top. It makes no difference. Just the way I'm used to doing it. So, we want the flower to stick out, which means it needs to move in the opposite direction of the eye that it's in. So on the left eye, I need to move it right. So I'm going to hold down shift and move it. So when you hold down a shift and hit left right arrow, it's going to move it 10 pixels at a time. So I'm going to hit, hit the right arrow key three times, move it 30 pixels to the right. So we're going to do one, two, three. OK, there's that one. Now we're going to do. For the right eye, we're going to move it to the left 30 pixels. There we go. And now if we hide these, we should see the two flowers offset to each direction. Now, to make the background sink into the background, you need to move it the same direction as the eye that's looking at it. So, in the left eye, we're going to move the background to the left, three, 30 pixels again. One, two, three. And then in the right eye, we're going to move it to the right, 30 pixels. One, two, three. So now, that's the basics of setting up the depth for each eye. One thing you're going to notice, though, that eye has part of the background cut out. That eye has part of the background cut out on each side. And there's no way around it. To make something 3D, you have to shift things to each side, and you're going to end up with this, which means you're going to have to crop the photo or copy and paste this edge and repeat it over. You're going to have to find some way. In this case, cropping the photo is fine. Since we, took, we moved everything 30 pixels, we don't, it's pretty simple. We know exactly what to do. So we're going to go to image, canvas size, pixels. We took 30 pixels off the left and 30 pixels off the right. So we need to crop it by 60 pixels. I'm just going to subtract 60 pixels off the width. The height needs to stay the same and we keep it in the middle. So I'll trim the left or right edges. Crop it down. There we go.
Now, one thing I noticed when I was testing this out before I am videotaping it here is that on my phone, it doesn't really like 3D pictures in this tall format. It doesn't, it, you can't make it fill up the whole screen. So, if you're going to look at it on like your HTC Evo, you'll probably want to follow this step two and just go ahead and crop the photo down to make it not as tall. It just doesn't like really tall 3D photos. I mean, you can look at it still, but it's really tiny. So I found this to be the better way. Crop that. And we have our newly made 3D photo. Now we're just going to follow the same steps of the custom artwork. Save as. Actually, we need to change this to a JPEG. Flower, and this is the left eye that's visible right now. Save. Nope, that is not my desktop. That's my computer. Save. Right image. Save. All right. Oops, that was what I needed. Um, now, Stereo Photo Maker. Open the left, right images. At this point, you should pretty much know what to do if you followed any of the other tutorials. Open. Here we go. Now, in this case, when you're taking an actual photograph and you're turning it 3D, it's a little bit hard to really just figure out the right depth. So, you're probably going to want to play around with it in Stereo Photo Maker. They have adjustment. It has an auto adjust, but I found that to sort of you lose too much depth if you do the auto adjust. I wouldn't do the auto adjust. I would do the easy adjustment though, uh, especially if you have some blue and red um, glasses so you can actually see the depth. But you just kind of want to play around with it. It's, you can sort of match it up like this is it's just too far apart. Line it up a little bit like that maybe. You can play around with it, make a couple versions of it and kind of you'll kind of figure out the sweet spot. I like to leave mine a little farther apart. It makes it a little bit harder to sort of get the image to pop out of your phone screen, but if you leave them a little bit farther apart and then while you're looking at it, hold the phone farther away and sort of tilt it back and forth so you get the right view and just look into the phone and bring it closer. I mean, I got a, I got a better depth than the regular 3D camera. I mean, I'll, I'll put the MPO file up and you can download it. But if you get it, it takes a little bit more work to get it into view, but once you do, the camera sticks out of the screen what looks like about two inches, like it's really floating out far in front. So you can actually get a really good depth by messing around with this. If you don't like that, if that's too hard for you to see because it takes a little more work to sort of get it to pop into 3D, just adjust the slider until they're, it's a little more, they're a little closer. Mess with that, find your sweet spot, hit OK, it'll fix them up for you. Save your MPO file and then go take a look at it on your phone. Uh, you can apply the same technique to something with more layers. You know, you could have all sorts of layers on top of each other. and You know, you could really make it all sorts of different depths, but this tutorial is long enough as it is. So play around with it. You can turn some other cool 2D photos into 3D. Uh, send them to me or post them in the comments. Uh, 